Sara Karimi es iraní, es investigadora, es uh, PhD, doctorado. Sara Karimi es de uh, Irán. She's a researcher. Sara, how are you? Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. In what are you doing research now, nowadays? I have been concentrated on la in labor market more than 20 years, so I am continuing my research in labor market. But at present, I am thinking about new alternative policies to create jobs for the people in remote areas, deprived region. So I, I prepared a proposal and sent to the uh, South South Conference, and fortunately they accepted. It is in the primitive, uh, what they say, stage. I think that government can be close to the local communities to accept their design for the most important needs of the community and give some financial help, but the uh, community must be active in implementing the project and supervising the project so it can have different effect on the community and the economics as whole because the people get more skills and can be empowered as it is um, very important now in economic, especially development economics discussion. And they can change the situation in deprived region to to be attractive for private investment too, after a while. So it is idea, it is not completely new. Uh, the government had different in different countries have different experiences. It was something in India, something Argentina, South Korea, but it is not very, what they say, old ideas and this it is new. So we have to try to have new experiences. It had a lot of challenges too because local communities have not experiences of designing, implementing, having cooperation with the government. But I think we have to start and solve the problems because the previous policies could not solve the problem of unemployment, underemployment, low wages, and poverty. So perhaps it is important and necessary to think about new new policies. Which will be a new policy for especially poverty? You know, I don't want to think of only for poverty because in my country at present we have the program of cash transfer. But it cannot eliminate poverty. Every month the people are waiting for the cash to come. So for eliminating the poverty, the people have to have job. And the job must be sustainable. So I, I am thinking that this community cooperation with the government and uh, labor-intensive project. Do you think that you want specialized policies to fight poverty? Certainly. I think that the aim of any policy is better well-being, higher standard of living, welfare. But I do not like to think about cash transfer because these cash transfer policies uh, cannot eliminate poverty. Every month the people are waiting for the money and poverty is there. So we have to think about creation, job, and sustainable job. Perhaps this policy for projects that are necessary for communities in different regions can be, uh, what they say, transitional. But we have to start somehow. And if we can create with these projects infrastructure, higher skills for the communities, it can be attractive for the private money to come and create sustainable growth there. So. All the policies who are somehow related to employment and job can be directly and indirectly related to poverty eradication in long run. When you speak about uh, community, you speak about small communities, about villages, or you speak in general about community as a basement of the society? Mm -hmm. 
as the problem of unemployment and poverty is not only in villages and the proportion of village villagers is decreasing in many countries in my country as well so we have to think about town and villages and uh, for example in iran we have very good what they say background of such project because we have by constitution um councils of villages and towns so these towns and villages councils can be good what they say a starting point for getting uh, all information about the needs of com communities the most crucial project that they they are insisting to have at a start for this project and creating jobs and income for them so these councils are in Iran, perhaps in other, con uh, other countries. These councils are directly elected by the people, but as now they are not so active, they are not uh, so important too. So if the government decide to have such policy and the people do believe that these councils are important in their life and their style of living, job, anything, they will be careful about their activity and, and performance. So I hope if the government uh, decide to think about alternative policy, it can create some activities in villages, in towns, and really vitalize these uh, councils. Give me please an example of alternative policy. I told you, for example, in my country, development policies are very, have very long histories. Uh, they go back to 1940s, yeah, 40s, 50s. We have 60 years of history of planning in Iran. So we have had development planning and development project by government. You, you are, sorry, the era of Mossadegh? Uh, yeah, planning goes before Mossad. Uh, yeah, and it uh, continued just before revolution and after the re Islamic revolution. We had uh, during the Iran-Iraq war, this planning stopped, but again they, we started planning. And be in this planning, government development projects are really very important. But these projects are top-down and decided by the government and implemented by the government. So there is no connection between the people in different... No feedback. No feedback, no supervision, no, what they say, active presence. So, uh, and they are not so interested. Perhaps there is uh, water canals the government uh, construct and uh, give it to the... I don't know, government official in this, in a certain part of the country. But as the people did not construct this, they are not so careful for maintenance, and they was not active for uh, creating these facilities and infrastructure in their own uh, community. So I am thinking about top-down planning, so it's, it can be new. And it is difficult, but in the same time, if we think about this and create uh, awareness and understanding through mass media, television especially, perhaps we can create such activities. And little by little, they can be very effective. It is some alternative planning. I have read in the New York Times a column of Thomas uh, Friedman, the columnist of the New York Times, about Iran. Mm -hmm. And he wrote that Iran has now an opportunity and a challenge. Mm -hmm. And he said it was nature, because the population of Iran is now uh, about uh, 75 million. Yeah. In general, the world doesn't know it. It's not 40 million, it's 75 million. Yeah. So he says, they have, they, you, have no challenges and no uh, opportunities, opportunities. How do you view it? Uh, 
unfortunately, I didn't read. I I didn't read it. But really, in Iran, we say that we have a lot of opportunities and challenges. If we can solve international and internal problems and use all the resources and our young population, highly educated and interested to change the economy and push forward the country. If we can use this what energy, we can go ahead. If we cannot use it, it can get dis- destructive. A lot of youngsters wants to have good job. They expect good life. And if we cannot move the economy, this opportunity can change to threats to the economic and political and social life of the country. And for example, drought is a threat for Iran? Yes, it can be. Because Iran generally is located in a region that is not a plenty of raining. So we have the problem of water for for agriculture, for sanitation, for drinking, everything. And it needs also uh, very careful projects all over the country and the alternative policy can be helpful and also it needs cooperation regionally so it is not only Iran because uh, the source of water comes from neighboring countries and we have to have some agreement about the water and it is uh, perhaps very important argument that in the Middle East water can be a very important source of conflict in the near future. So internally we have to be very careful and externally in the region we have to be active for solving the problem before it it become very critical. Because common knowledge about Middle East and general of the region is that uh, the key point is oil. Mm-hmm. You are talking about water. I think a uh, discussion regarding water is increasingly in the region. Okay, oil is there, and the price of oil is important. The um, policy for using oil for development is very important. There are different ideas, different beliefs. For example, in my country, when we have different government, we have different policies regarding oil revenues. So uh, oil is very important. We cannot neglect it. But water is also very important and environment is very important because uh, all countries in this region is trying to keep the water and created a lot of dams in different parts and because of them the previous environment is changing and this it is the risk of uh, what the dry lakes in my country it is very important now so there are a lot of discussion and if we can change the situation perhaps there is good opportunity there. But the risks are also very important. And your, your we is the region. When you say we, we, you say we, the Iranians, or we, the region, the whole region? Uh, I think many problems, many opportunities and risks and threats uh, are common between Iran and our neighboring countries. So when I think about Iran, okay, we, ha- we have to do many things in my country, but it is not enough. And it is the same, I like the idea of uh, European Union. Okay, it is not easy in my region, but for a very, what they say, urgent problem like water, we have to think uh, in common, uh, I don't know, meetings and have common decision. I hope so. Which was your experience here in uh, Santiago de Chile with the Klaxo and the South-South meeting? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, this meeting was very interesting for me and I hope to be accepted. So I wrote carefully and prepared all the documents that uh, was required. So uh, it was really very excellent opportunity for me to be here and I uh, I learned a lot really I, I can tell you uh, there were a lot of discussion about many many important issues that perhaps it is related to different countries but mostly 
are in all sorts, sort, all region of Asia, of Africa and Latin America. And I think that uh, such gathering create networking not only one week here, so perhaps we can continue. For example, I, I, told, uh, I uh, talked with a uh, colleague from Bangladesh that we can cooperate regarding something, labor markets, especially regarding women in labor market in Bangladesh and Iran. What are the similarities and differences? Because Bangladesh and Iran are two great Muslim countries, highly populated, but very different regarding women in labor market. So, Which are the, the, the specific conditions in Iran regarding labor market and women? Mm -hmm. Which are they? Uh, you know, uh, some problems are really global, but in developing countries perhaps can be worse. Especially the problem of jobless growth. Perhaps you, you know that it is very important nowadays in economic debate. So in recent years, the number, and the number of women in universities and higher education is increasing. So they are interested to be active in labor market. And because of two elements, the... Uh, active population, active in labor market, a population in Iran has increased very rapidly. One was baby boom in 1980s, and the other is increasing proportion of women in labor market. So we had high growth of supply, the person who are interested to go in the labor market, but the growth of demand is not sufficient. So when the economic growth uh, the growth rate is low. The problem of unemployment, underemployment, and informal employment, low wages, is as, as uh, accelerating in many countries, in Iran as well. So we have the problem now. When you compare uh, Iran and uh, Bangladesh, mm. you said that you mentioned the Muslim uh, criteria or issue. Mm. What is the difference uh, of the incidence of uh, the Muslim issue in the labor market regarding women? I am interested in this subject. Why? Because there is this imagination that if women uh, participation rate in Iran is low, it is related to Islamic belief. But I do not believe in it. Uh, and because of this, I considered Bangladesh a very traditional Muslim country. I believe that Bangladeshi people are more, what they say, traditional Muslim people compared to Iranian highly educated people. But in Bangladesh, the participation rate of women in labor market is much higher. So it is a good example that Islam is not the case. And I was interested to know. You know, there are a huge investment in garment industry in Bangladesh. And millions of girls and women from traditional family in different parts of the country goes to this factory to work. So, they are more traditional. But if the family household is so poor and needs their income, so they accept the girls go to the factory far from their uh, towns and villages to work. But in my country, because of oil, at first wages are much higher. It is not comparable to Bangladesh. And the other is that our international relations have some problem. If we can have huge investment in uh, free trade zones, electronics, something, perhaps participation, perhaps I believe it is more, mostly likely in Iran that when uh, we have huge investment in electronics, something, in free trade zone in different parts of the country, many women are interested to work and will be at at attractive. Uh, uh, nowadays, that uh, investment rate in industries is low. 
many educated women cannot find good jobs and go to their own houses and waiting and uh, in census are inactive population. So I believe that economic structure is more important than traditional belief and religion belief. Why did you begin with uh, your research or your career? Why? Which was the purpose or the origin or, I don't know, the mystery? Uh, why I started my research? You know, employment and labor market problem is one of the most important. So there, I think that the number of researchers in this area is increasing in all countries, because if we want to be, uh, what they say, realistic, not something in the air, we have to think about the urgent problems, to think about the possible solutions, policy, alternative policies. So uh, I decided to write my master thesis about, um, do you know, structural, structural adjustment policies and labor market. So I started my dissertation in 1990s, and I continued by now. The paradise of, of those policies. Yeah, and you saw in many countries, they had a lot of promises that uh, market forces will solve all the problems, and they dis destroyed mm -hmm. many countries' economic structure without replacing better pattern. Which is the level of change of the new government of Rouhani, if you compare it with the government of Ahmadinejad? I think that Rouhani is a realistic president. He knows what are the challenges and what are the possibilities. Uh, the previous government was really idealistic, uh, have something in his mind that was not true, you know? All the time, because of uh, President Ahmadinejad, I believe that had something vague in his mind and created a lot of useless challenges. So Iranian people really are peaceful people and we have a lot of problems that we have to solve in our country. So we want good relation with the world. And this new government, Uh, from the beginning said that we will try our best to solve all the challenges with, uh, we, uh, within our international relations with other countries. So we are very hopeful for the future. And the first step in United Nations and discussion with uh, five plus one regarding atomic energy debates, mm -hmm. I think have been very good steps forward. So we are, for example, me, are full of hope for the future. You can say that uh, the process of um, Rouhani will be a transition in political terms? Uh, as uh, we want to say transition, we had before also, during President Khatami, before Ahmadinejad, we had the same policy. Uh, try to solve the problems with different countries, prevent any new tension. So if we want to go uh, to say transition, yes, we want to go back. You know, uh, the pre uh, previous president uh, invite all people, all nation for dialogue among civilization, dialogue among nation. So we, we are the same. And I think these eight years was some stop, some period that we do not want to repeat again. Sarah, thank you very much. You are welcome. Thank you. Sarah Karimi from uh, Iran. Thank you. Mm -hmm.